2 o'clock in Philadelphia. And time for the best show ever. ever, ever, ever. Now, your starting lineup. lineup. With 11 years in the big league, he's walked the walk. He's talking the talk. Never holding back. Always bringing the heat. Ricky. Ricky. And loving Philly sports since birth, long hair, tattoos, and the only thing bigger than his Philly passion is his Philly mouth. Now, Hunter, Hunter, Brody. She's a Georgia transplant, but 20 year Philadelphia radio vet, producing the show and pressing everybody's buttons. The perfect mix of Philly attitude and Southern charm. Southern charm. Jen, Jen, Gordo! And finally, your host, a 22-year radio personality. Personality. Born and raised in South Jersey. A Philadelphia sports lifer. Lifer. A dedicated true five for five expert. Ty Rose Johnson. It's the best show ever. 97.5, the fanatic, Philadelphia. 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 Good afternoon, everybody. How about that intro? How about that intro? Welcome to the best show ever here on 97.5, the fanatic, and NBC Sports Philadelphia. The phone number to participate, 610-632-0975. Yes, you just heard the cast of characters to my left. Hunter Brody, how are you today, Hunter? I'm doing fantastic. The juices are flowing after that. I'm ready to take a charge. Ready, ready to roll, ready to roll. Yeah. Ready to go. Yeah. So who is left? The great Ricky Batalico. How you doing, man? Matty Cord got me fired up. Feeling good? Kidding me? Feeling good. Ready to and, go. And in the other room, all alone. All by myself. Jen Scordo, how are you today, Jen? I'm great. Good to be here. All right. Yes, this is the debut episode of The Best Show Ever. And you're wondering, people, if you just tuned in, if you've been under a rock the last couple of weeks, whatever it may be, why is it called The Best Show Ever? We'll lay it out real fast, for hopefully the last time. But we will lay it out right now. The point is, you guys are the best fans ever. You're the best fans around. You're the best fans in the world. You deserve The Best Show Ever. And our goal, each and every day, will be to provide you with the best show ever. So why not just keep it real 100% with how we're going to try to walk the walk and we're going to talk the talk, obviously, for the next four hours. That's why it's called the best show ever. But it's now time for our opening statement, and the opening statement starts with the word of the day. The word of the day is beginning. Beginning, for obvious reasons, beyond just the show, beginning. Because with the Phillies, and we're going to get to the Eagles, we're going to talk to Tim McManus at 4 o'clock, we get to Sean Watson, we got a lot of things to get to today. Trade deadline tomorrow, 6 o'clock, we got a lot to get to with the Phillies. But beginning, beginning, because right now is the beginning in a couple different ways. Number one, with the team, eight, they're now a season high, eight games above 500. All right? And for years, we've been wondering, when will this team finally be a contender once again? And I think we can all comfortably say right now, whether we think they can win the whole thing or not, if you're one and a half games out of the second wild card, pretty solidly in that third wild card, and a chance to add to your team, right now, they're contenders. This is hopefully the beginning of ending the drought that is the longest postseason drought in all of the National League, second longest in all of Major League Baseball. I think that this day, the next well, 28 hours are hugely important for this franchise. I think that this is important. I think that the team has earned the, the, the right to push in. If the team's not good, you don't bother, you sell. I think they have to buy. I think they have to make the move, and it's the beginning. And also, I think with Alec Bowman, I want to give him credit, the calendar has turned. We are now in the month of August. His July was unbelievable, and I didn't know if he had it in him. I don't know if you guys knew he had it in him. i got to ask the people as well today. Is as far as the first thing to go with, is this the beginning of him becoming a legit MLB third baseman, a legit longtime Phillies player, like we thought in the that during the lockout? I mean, during uh, COVID, that 60 game season, we thought, okay, last season it didn't look that way. Some person who used to sit here called him Kraft Singles. Um, now he looks <laughs> like a real player. So I want to ask you guys right at right at the top, two things: is this the beginning for you guys 
Uh, Hunter will go to you first of the Phillies making this step and really changing things as far as being a team, uh, that a real contender. And number two, when it comes to Bohm, is this the beginning of him being real or did he just have a lucky month? No, I think this is a different squad. In years past, we would see them lose to the Chicago Cubs the way that they did, and maybe it would spiral out of control, but that's when I look at someone like Kyle Schwarber. When you lose Gene Segura, and when you lose a Bryce Harper, you have a guy in the locker room that knows, or the clubhouse that knows what October baseball is all about, and I just think that his... His personality, the way that he speaks to the media, the way that he has that clubhouse going, he's a big part of this to keep everybody on the same page. And, you know, they're look at their record right now and where they are over 500. This is a different squad. Now, in regards to Alec Boom. Is it real? He, I always – I ripped him a lot. But I always believed that his <laughs> bat was better than what we were seeing. You said something, though, a moment ago that kind of made me iffy. You mentioned – is he the Phillies' third baseman long-term? And I go, I don't, I don't know if he's that, but will he be in a Phillies' uniform I, long-term? I believe yes. I have to, I have to jump in here yeah, because go he's going to have to be the third baseman. You have JT Real Muto right now who's going to move over to first base at some point. In, in my no, I mean, I, I don't think you're going to have a choice. It's a, He's a catcher. Sooner or later, those legs aren't going to be going. And you yeah. have to move him somewhere. Where would you move him? You move him over to third base or first base. You know what? They actually just throw him in center field right now. How's that? Well, that that's a joke. That's a joke. Well, well, well. But I like what Boehm is doing right now. He yeah. is he is the one guy that has kept this team together. I, I mean, when you really think about it, when Harper went down, they needed somebody to step up, and they have this guy step up out of nowhere. And quite frankly, the other guys have kind of joined in. JT Real Muto has gotten it going lately. Yes. And Castellanos is now starting to swing the bat, although it's not home runs. He's, I mean, now, he's hitting all singles. Right. So, but 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 neither one of you laid out the initial thing, and I want to ask all the people, 610 732 We're in trouble we, already. We, no, no, we all agree. We all agree that they have to buy. You, they can't just stay as is. Certain, in certain areas. Which they, way does Dave go, though? Well, we'll get to that a little later on in the hour. But first things first, do we, are we unanimous that they have to buy between let, now and 6 o'clock tomorrow? Let, let's make this statement. I heard Dombrowski's little presser with, mm-hmm. with, the, with the media last week, and he said we would be a very good team in a three-game playoff. Now, if you want to read between the lines, and he was talking about the trade deadline stuff, I'm thinking there's a pitcher somewhere involved in this. And I'm hoping there is because, you know, Kyle Gibson's Kyle Gibson. You you get an up up guy, down guy every yeah. once in a while. You're not really sure what you're getting. But what they need is one more guy to solidify that that starting Well, five. let me ask you this. And what? Eflin's injury, you can't. No, no, I know no first, I'm not even counting no, 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 on him. No, no, no. I know because at first they came with the, oh, his knee's just a little sore. Oh, it'll be fine. His knee's not fine. You can't bank on him even if he comes back. Suarez, I believe in more than most. I think that he's, uh, I think, well, he's in club Tyrone, first of all. And all club Tyrone guys. He's coming along. I think he's fine. I do think it's starting pitcher, but we agree they have to buy. Do you think it? Now, there are people out there that think, also think, you mentioned center field. Yeah. Me personally, I think starting pitcher, more important right now, even though I would love to have both, but which one do you think is more important, center field or starting pitcher? Because most likely, if we, we trust Jason Stark, he'll be on Wednesday. He'll be on each, each and every Wednesday at uh, around 435. But he's saying that they made a list of players that were untouchable. That came out over the weekend, and I saw there were people who were a little bit up in arms about it. And the four pitchers, I pretty much agree with. You need young arms. They don't have enough of them. Fine. But they made a catcher, at least initially, and I trust his reporting. Now, that doesn't mean they won't change their minds. But the initial statement was that a catcher, Ohapi, who I don't know when he's going to play. I don't know when he'll be ready to be in the majors. He would be completely untouchable. With that in mind, that means you can only get one. Unless you're including one of those, one or two of those guys from that top five list, and we'll go over it in just a second, um, of, of the top five guys in their system that are completely untouchable, I don't think you can address both issues. So if you have to pick one, which one do you pick? Well, it's got to go starting pitching for me. And maybe they're doing the Logan O'Hoppy thing more for leverage, where they, they want to play close to the chest of, I'm not moving this guy. So when they do open up conversations with other teams and you call around the league, then it makes it a little bit more difficult and teams know kind of where you stand with that player. So playing hardball, if you will. But my question to you, Ricky, is when you talk about, okay, Kyle Gibson's fine, he's okay. What if you're bringing in another four type of starter, another Kyle Gibson? Does that satisfy you or move the needle for you? I think it will satisfy me in the long run just for the sole reason. You're going to be getting Harper back. You're going to be getting Segura back. These things do play in. 
Yes. And, and this is why I would go with a starting pitcher also, because you get those guys back. That is like getting a trade. I know that's like an old cliche, and true. a lot of people say it, but it's 100% Look how long true. Look has been out. Now, the, they were eight. They were, uh, what, they were eight under. He's May 31st. Eight, they were eight under 500 when he got hurt. They're plus 16 well, which is with him scary out. in itself, isn't and, it? And I saw Casey, who works for NBC Sports, C Sports Philadelphia. And Casey I want to Feeney. Ask, yeah, Casey Feeney. We love Casey uh, when he's not talking about Duke. Uh, he, they're 16 over without him. And he has – he's now what the guy with the most games – in regular season games without a postseason appearance. Well, the ironic is thing there, is... Is there possible that he's poisoned? But separate from that, I, I don't think he is. I, but I'm saying... Bang. I mean, well, is, well, it, is, it, is it possible wants, that he's poisoned? Everyone wants Didi Gregorius out, and that would almost be the replacement, maybe. So which yeah, one would you want? Is he poisoned? Is Didi poisoned? Because you could make the argument everyone thinks he's poisoned. I, so I, which I, one I is know, it? I know people want Didi out. But he, look at the, his glove lately. Has I'm on been your really side. Good. He saved games. I'm on your side. Please. They win... Four game sweep. I guess we should have mentioned. He's Four not game hitting sweep. home runs. Though. Right. I mean, Four. that's his forte. <laughs> Absolutely. 610-632-0975. Four game sweep over the weekend of the Pirates. Didn't mention that right at the top. That's a yawner. But first time since 1968. They haven't. This is the first time they've been bad. The Pirates are. Single A team? Yeah, but uh, let's be yeah. realistic. Three I, of I, four I, is probably what you expected going yeah, in. Right. So to get four of four is get great. Four of four is great. Both times it got interesting was because of familiar. Uh, do we. <laughs> Why is he here? There, I mean, uh, yeah, yes, uh, I know people will look at me and ask me that question. He doesn't be belong at, at, at the big league level right now. And that is that is as, as firm as I could say it. There's no reason that, that you can't bring up a kid from the minor leagues to do what he's doing. All right, well, we've got a lot to get to today. 610-632-0975. Trade deadline tomorrow, 6 o'clock, talking about the Phillies. If you can only pick one position, and if we're being realistic – that's where we're at. You saw the small move over the weekend. We'll get into that a little bit later in the show. What are you picking? Do you want a starting pitcher or do you want a center fielder? You most likely will not have both. We have so much more to get to. 610-632-0975. We'll be back here on 97.5 The Fanatic and NBC Sports Philadelphia.